join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we'll begin our meeting. 201, according to what I got here. Um, I need a motion to approve the minutes of our April 6th meeting. Uh, so moved. Is there a second? I second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. All right, financial reports, Joe. Well, because uh, our audit was completed, Lisa has now finished January, February, March, and April reports, which you have. I think I'll just focus on the April report for now, but you have the other months there uh, to review. For April, <clears throat> I think, uh, as you can see, our cash balance is pretty steady. Our billing has decreased as we expected. Um, we saw a decrease April 2020 compared to 2019 of about $118,485. Uh, that was, was expected due to the, the current situation. Um, our rate of return is down as well due to that reduction in revenue and, and much lower than last year. Um, otherwise, I don't have any other comments on the financials for April. Uh, we, there... do, we do expect May to be uh, showing some increase. We've seen an increase in water consumption, especially in the latter half of May but it will be down as well compared to last year, I'm sure. Do we have an idea why Sheboygan Falls is up? Yeah, that was interesting as well. I think normally that means that the Bemis recycling facility, uh, their water recycling um, system is not functioning. That's the only information I have. Okay. Yeah, our return on rate base has slipped below one for, that's been a long time since it's been below one. Yes, hopefully May will be a little better, and then hopefully again June will be uh, a little closer to normal. Okay. Any questions on the April financials? If uh, you gentlemen have had a chance to look at them, I did. No, I'm yeah. good. Yeah, I scanned through them. I, I didn't read them in detail, but I scanned through them. I saw nothing that was uh, other than what we already discussed that I wanted to talk about. Okay. Is there a, a motion to approve the financial reports as presented? Uh, so moved. I second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Carried. All right. Moving on, superintendent's report, Joe. Uh, we'll start with construction maintenance. And uh, we did have, uh, although we were working with small teams, we did make progress and installed water main uh, down <clears throat> uh, on Niagara Avenue near North Commerce. That's a very old part of town. It still had uh, brick cobbles in, in the roadway. Uh, we were installing water mains so that the contractors could uh, proceed other work for the city. So we had about one to two week of, weeks of work in that area, completed that safely, and, sa uh, and brought it into service. And uh, that's indicated on the construction maintenance report. We also were out, we now have a fleet of auto flushers on the fire hydrants. And we install those in, in strategic areas where we know there's not a lot of water consumption and we want to move, move water, turn the water over and freshen it. 
So we began installing and calibrating uh, some of those. Um, we have other hydrants that we just uh, flush on a quarterly basis. We actually flush quite a few hydrants to maintain water quality. Um, that's an important part of uh, maintaining the distribution system. So in April, we were active doing that work. It's kind of ideal, it's a one person uh, job and there are many uh, locations that we flush. So we got a good start on that work. Uh, we did have uh, three lead laterals come out of service and we did the taps for the, the uh, replacement lead service or uh, replacement uh, water service lines at those three locations. Um, we did a larger tap uh, for the uh, uh, the uh, Sheboygan Visitor Center location. And uh, we did start uh, some cleanup at our Taylor Hill Reservoir site. A lot of tree removal and some pipe relocation uh, was done there. Um, and that's a pretty good summary of April construction maintenance activity. How many auto flushers do we have, Joe? No. Uh, I believe we're close to a dozen. Um, um, I could be off a little bit on that, Jerry, but about a dozen. Okay. Uh, we did not have any main breaks uh, for the month, so that was good news. Uh, we did, uh, in distribution, add some new valves and hydrants, and those were, again, on the Niagara Avenue project, and we replaced some very old pieces of infrastructure down, down in that area. Um, moving on to operations, uh, we have both March and April reports. I think I'll, I'll focus on April report, and I think the big story here again is just reduced water consumption. We were down about 33 percent, or yeah, 32 percent compared to last year. Uh, we were well aware of that. That's a huge difference. Um, you know, the, the challenge in a water treatment plant is it really doesn't take a whole lot more. Uh, water chemicals or, or activity to produce, you know, an extra 5 million gallons of water a day. So that uh, reduction in consumption really affects our bottom line very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, you can see our, our average day for the year is only about 10.8 million gallons a day in the far bottom right corner compared to 12. Point Three million gallons a day last year. So uh, we're certainly producing less water. Uh, that's uh, not a problem other than in terms of revenues. And we're expecting to see those same results in again through about the middle of May. And then we saw a little bit of an upturn and we're seeing a little more of an upturn now where I think uh, now we're probably down more like 15% compared to last year. So we're definitely seeing some recovery in, in water consumption out in the system. And yeah, I've heard the, I'm sorry. I was gonna say I've heard the production at DMAC has been on and off, so that would affect us quite a bit. Definitely. I have to apologize, I failed to download the customer relations and fiscal report this month, so I don't have that embedded here. Uh, but uh, the financials for April reflect that we did, even though we did not have uh, late fees that were being charged, uh, most customers continued to pay their bills on, on time. Uh, and. Uh, we didn't we didn't see a massive uh, change in in timeliness of payments. Uh, we've not been disconnecting under the situation, uh, and that affects uh, our collections to some extent. But again, not not a huge factor at this point. 
And I think that would conclude the superintendent's report. Anybody have any other questions for Joel? I don't. Not at this time, no. All right, moving on. Items previously held over for discussion. We're talking about the lead service line replacement program. Yes, there I have an update. <clears throat> As the board is aware, the Public Service Commission, um, after their legal department reviewed our initial lead service replacement program, they had an issue with our use of uh, municipal assessments to pay for part of the lateral or service line replacement and utility funds to pay for the, the rest. They, they didn't uh, uh, like that combination of, of utility funds with a, a municipal process that goes through city hall and, and the city finance department. Um, so there were discussions between the city attorney and attorneys at the public service commission and they really heard that we take a different route and, and not use municipal assessments in our, in our new program. Um, we may well be able to use them in the future for non-service, non-lead service, non -service uh, line situations, but they don't want that mixing of the two types of, of funding mechanisms. So they, they directed us to reflect on the Sun Prairie Water Utilities Program and I had relayed some information about that to the board members. And basically our program becomes, instead of using municipal assessments and charging that benefit against the property owner and having the utility pay that money upfront and having a formal assessment process through the common council and the money's collected by city finance and then directed to the water utility and, and repayment, instead of all that, they uh, really suggested that we modify that to a simple loan program that would be entirely in-house at the water utility. So instead of um, assessing a property for part of the service line replacement per foot, we would have a loan in place of that assessment. The loan money is still coming from the water utility and the, the payments on the loan would come back directly to the water utility. And it's just a simpler process and they felt avoided some legal issues in mixing those two processes. So the main change they wanted us to make was, was that to uh, not use municipal assessments and substitute uh, an in-house loan program. So the utility accountant uh, uh, reviewed that in detail and, and actually preferred that process because, because it is cleaner, it's more simple, uh, it's more direct. Um, it doesn't cost the utility anything in addition because we're, we're still funding that uh, uh, money up front uh, regardless of if it's an assessment or a loan. Um, so we were directed to modify the program and submit it again, which we've now done, and we would be waiting for comments to come back from the Public Service Commission as to whether they're going to approve it now or not. Uh, most of the rest of the program stayed uh, intact. Um, the, the program allows uh, a grant from the utility revenues of up to half the cost of a service line replacement, not to exceed $2,500 in any instance, and other similar requirements that we have been using with the DNR grant program in terms of approved plumbers doing the work and, and some other details like that. So currently our program is, is still under review by the Public Service Commission. And I've been advised that we, we might have a decision by mid-June. So we're, we're hopeful of that. Um, they might request more information. They might request more change, 
changes. I, I hope not. Uh, but it is moving forward with, with that element of delay that we've seen. Is there any collateral on those loans, Joe? Uh, no. Okay. However, we can, I guess you could say, collateralize them in terms that we uh, can put them on the property tax roll. Okay. All right. That's what I was getting at because yeah. we had the, you know, with the assessments you could do that. So Okay. Yeah, we retain that. And then when the property sale sells, the loan becomes due in full. So there's that mechanism also. Okay. That answers my question. Okay. Anybody else have any questions on that? No, that no I'm good. good. That was a good one, Jerry. <laughs> So do we need a motion to that effect, Joe, or not? Um, I, I think, a, yeah, a motion accepting that, that that has been submitted and we're waiting, you know, for the next step from the Public Service Commission. I will so move. I will second. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Raw water improvements intake project. Well, here we've had a lot of ongoing activity. We've had a number of meetings and uh, a lot of the focus has been on the building design and the building is where the intake pipelines come in and there's a large circular well in the ground and it, it has pumps in it and all the associated equipment with the pumps and some chemical feeds and the intake pipeline. And the challenge is we have a very small site by the lake shore. Um, we're trying to fit it into the site and protect it as much as possible. One of the things that we're more and more concerned about is, is shoreline erosion and, and high water and wave damage, which we and the harbor and others have seen a lot of this year. Uh, um, so we want to be sure we get this building in, in the best possible spot. Having said that, it's a very tight geography that we're dealing with uh, down there. So we have really a preferred layout and then an option. Um, now, many years ago, we had gone to the Parks Commission, and I think this was probably, I'm guessing, maybe 14 years ago, and the utility was granted an easement to build and operate an intake facility at that flat area north of the water treatment plant. Um, we may have to request a slight change in that easement as we're trying to kind of shoehorn the, the building into that property. At the time we requested the easement, we didn't have a specific design. We just sort of had a very rough idea of where this might go. Um, but later this week on Thursday, we're having a pre-development meeting with the engineers, utility staff, and city staff to talk about issues with the site. It, it remaining parkland, we, the utility was, in fact, the city didn't want to sell that land to the utility. They preferred an easement arrangement. Um, but we have to sit down and discuss the various issues you know, as this building is going to sit in, in that isolated spot of, of Volrath Park. Some of the issues are, you know, simple, like uh, the Frisbee Golf Hole is in that area. What are we going to do with that? Other issues are a little more complicated. There, there's a slope there that's wooded. We might have to impact that to some extent. And again, the shoreline protection is a big issue because that area was never really, other than the old jetties, that area was never really rip wrapped or, or sheeted for significant shoreline protection. Um, and then there's also a very large storm uh, water outfall there. I believe it's the uh, seven foot or eight foot diameter storm water outfall right in that area that we're either going to have to relocate slightly or cross. Um, 
that that pipe was put in after the floods of, of 1999 and 2000. And it's kind of right, it is right between the water treatment plant and the open space. So that we'll have to talk about as well. Um, but a lot of progress is made. We've had a lot of staff input. How do we want this building to function? There's been a lot of talk about the generators to, to back up the facility, uh, the pumps. Uh, we've had focus on energy involved so that we're starting off with, you know, the most efficient uh, system we can have because it's going to operate around the clock, you know, for years and years. Um, so I think we're making really good progress. It will be, it will be good to see what uh, other cities staff concerns are as we refine it more. Um, and that's, that's kind of the summary of where we're at with the, the project at this point. Any questions for Joe on, on that project? I don't have any. Nor do I. Nope. All right. Moving on, items for discussion and possible action. Uh, you request approval of renewal proposal for the health insurance. Yeah, I would just say that every June 1st is our renewal date. We have a one-year contract. And every year, our, our broker consultant, Julie Meyer of Hub, uh, meets with Prairie State and other vendors and, and presents us options for renewing our plan. And because of some HIPAA issues, uh, I, I don't have a lot of details to add, but, but you do have uh, Julie Meyer's recommendation on the plan, uh, which she developed uh, talking with our, the utility accountant myself to a limited extent and Prairie State. And I think health insurance is probably our biggest employee benefit. And um, you know, each year we look at various options, self-insured, fully insured. You know, this year was the renewal was more costly and than in past years. Uh, however, as Lisa, uh, our accountant, reviewed costs going back about 10 years, you can see there are you know, years where we have lower costs on a self-insured plan and years where we have higher costs. And at the end of the day, it, it looked pretty clear that being self-insured had been a less costly way for us to approach the insurance in, in the in those 10 years of time. Anybody have any questions on the proposal that uh, Julie, not Julie prepared, but that Lisa prepared? So to summarize, Joe, basically we're talking status quo for now, but uh, consider possible change for next year. That's, that was my interpretation of what I read. Um, basically, Mark, we did have a, a stop loss carrier, a different one that came in, in with a much more attractive proposal, renewal proposal. So the recommendation was to accept the, the stop loss uh, carrier called Northwind because they had a significantly less costly proposal uh, and, and remain on a self-insured basis with Prairie States as our third party administrator uh, and, and evaluate fully insured plans uh, up through around the, the January 1st timeframe. Mm -hmm. So the fully insured plans have some advantages, but they also have dis 
some disadvantages that we would need to understand before making that kind of change. So the recommendation of Julie in that regard was uh, to accept the, the North Winds renewal proposal and continue evaluating, you know, up through that, that January timeframe. If, if things look good, we can continue. If things don't look good with 30 days notice, we can, we can change. Mm -hmm. Well, I would move that we proceed as, as proposed. The one thing that, uh, Joe, did you want to discuss the, um, the deductible at all or? Uh, the original carrier from last year had attached three uh, deductibles uh, called lasers, and this is intended to further reduce their risk in case there are large claims. We had one laser in the past, so this year they added two additional lasers, and that total uh, dollar amount was about $800,000 that had been lasered out as a potential risk. Uh, the Northwind proposal had only two lasers uh, at, at an amount of $500,000. So that was a significant difference. And, and uh, rather than three lasers, they were down to two. And th this is one downside of the self-insured carriers is that they're now starting to attach these lasers as, as a way to shift this um, and that's what they've done in this particular renewal. It doesn't mean that risk is uh, guaranteed. It means it's a possible risk, possible exposure. And the other thing would be the employee contribution. Um, I'm not sure that everybody received um, that information, Joe. Is that something we want to discuss at the present moment or just bring it up uh, in the future? No, I think I would ask that the board consider that as well. If, if the board determines to accept uh, the consultant's recommendation, then, then I would advise that we need to uh, increase our employee contributions towards the health plan um, we haven't done that for a while, and it's now it's now dropped to a percentage that is is much lower than standard. And I I had forwarded on a figure that uh, showed how we would need to get that up in either a one step or a two step process. And yeah, I would ask consideration on that issue as well. So I don't recall seeing that. It, it may have been something that I missed, but I don't recall that. Uh, I can quote it here for you, Mark. Yeah. Or do you have it right up there, Jerry? Or I've got it in front of me. Well, I've got it in front of me here in, pa in paper because I had gotten, I'm still printing some of the stuff off uh, so I can get at it at my desk no matter where I am. but. Um, basically, the, the, the cost, the, the contributions that employees, um, you know, I guess to look at normally, you, we'd have to double the contribution um, that employees have right now. As Joe said, it's about 5%. Um, we'd have to double, basically, their contribution to get to 10% um, since the, the costs and claims have increased significantly in the past two years. Um, as Joe mentioned, uh, with what we're talking about, um, contributions will be about 5% of the total costs. Um, current contribution is a single individual $75 a month and $150 per month for family. Um, we're talking about in doubling that, increasing it to $150 for single and $300 for family. Um, uh, and since that is, that's a significant increase, Lisa's, you know, saying that we could increase it 
to 125 and 250 as of June, and then move it to 150 and 300 as of January of 2021. So we get closer to that 10% figure. Of course, there'll be some communication plans for both. Oh, yeah, we have to mention to them that they, but they've got to realize that the costs have, have gone up significantly over the last couple of years. And they can probably see that in the invoices they get from the medical community as well as, um, you know, just normal, I, I guess, scuttlebutt that's out there. Everybody knows that prices have gone up tremendously. And the utility, as Joe said, this is one of the best benefits that uh, our employees have, um, better than uh, uh, the fact even when you're looking at a fully funded plan. Um, you know, those deductibles have gone up as well. So. I agree with what you're, what both of you are saying. I'm just thinking that uh, there will be squawking. Oh yeah, but and and again, we have to just make sure we're presenting it in the in the right light that they understand that um, if we move to a a, a fully insured plan, um, you know, who knows what's going to happen with co-pays and everything else. Plus the fact that uh, you you're not sure that if we go to a fully fully insured plan, the 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 providers that will be available in that plan. Right. So um, we're, we're looking out for the employees, but we also have a fiduciary duty to turn around and, and look at what the utility is spending compared to, um, you know, the employees and things like that. So. Quite so. That's still, even at, if you, if you double the rates, that's still extremely cheap to what a lot of people pay in industries for their benefits. Oh, de definitely, definitely. I think a lot of companies do it like 25% employee, 75% company, or somewhere in that ratio. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. So phasing it in over a six-month period, you know, doing one now and one in January is, I think, going to be very beneficial to the employees, and they're still getting one heck of a benefit. I would agree with that. I would as well. So you had a motion out there. I should have taken a second and then gone to discussion, but... <laughs> <laughs> so your motion still stands, Mark? Well, I, I will go back with the additional information we have here, and I will move that we proceed as proposed. Is there a second? I second, I second that. All in favor say aye. Aye. And chair votes aye. Motion carried. Okay, a proposal for a mandatory American Water Infrastructure Act risk and resilience assessment. That's a mouthful. That is a mouthful. And what it entails is that in uh, 2018, the federal government passed the American Water Infrastructure Act, and it had certain requirements imposed on public utilities, including preparation of a risk and resilience assessment. Now, long ago, after 9-11, the federal government came out with what was called vulnerability assessments, VAs, and public utilities had to produce those at that point in time. Uh, and in the interim, there really hasn't been much focus on risk assessments. Uh, so now we're, we're back visiting that topic. Um, part of it is to generate information for the federal government to help determine needs, financial needs, you know, where are the risks? How can we enhance state loan programs to address those? Um, you know, it's an information gathering process, but it's also an exercise for utilities to try to look objectively at their operations and find ways to reduce risk where risk is defined more generally as an unexpected and lengthy interruption of, of water production or, or water distribution in a community. So the federal government passed the act and we must abide by it. And, and there's a fairly tight time frame that we need to present our assessment before the end of 2020. Uh, 
in this case, the assessment is a pretty complicated process. You know, they don't want just a general, well, you know, this could happen and this could happen. They have a very methodical process to go through to evaluate vulnerabilities and, and resilience. So because of that, we felt this was a case where we should probably work with an outside consultant that's doing these for other utilities and not try to just ram through it on our own. Uh, the vulnerability assessments we did on our own and it was a lengthy process and we have that information to provide into this updated process, but we did ask <clears throat> AECOM to provide a proposal for doing this work and this assessment for us and with us. And that's what you see in the attachment. Um, AECOM is the firm that we worked with on the water demand study, and they did an outstanding job on that, the 50-year water demand study. Um, they seem to be one of the more active firms in, in these uh, risk and resilience assessments. Um, and we certainly have a good working relationship with them. So Bill Swearingen, our operations supervisor and I reviewed the proposal and we feel it addresses the needs. Um, we do feel there's an optional item that we don't need that we can handle ourselves. Uh, but we would recommend accepting the AE comma pro, uh, proposal so that we can launch them on this in the next six months here and get it completed and get it submitted and uh, not have to uh, bring this in house. Now, I should add, you know, unfortunately, we will have to pull this. This was not a separate budget line item, so we would have to pull this out of our water main budget, but we have sufficient dollars there, and, and we've already canceled a number of projects that I'm, I'm not overly concerned about pulling it out of, of that line item. You knew I was going to ask that question. <laughs> I knew that, yeah. <laughs> How many years, Jerry? I should know something. <laughs> and uh, with AECOM being such a, a big player in this, in this process, they have sufficient bandwidth to address our work? Yeah, they do. They service us mostly out of their Stevens Point office and uh, with a little support out of Green Bay. And we've dealt with them for years. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. They've under, also various done, names. <laughs> under various names. Yeah, they did a lot of work for us. They, well, they uh, did the design of the Horizon Drive water tower, and they did this uh, comparison of water tower sites, and they've done some pump station upgrades for us. So they've done a lot of work for us in the past few years. Any questions of Joe on this proposal? I don't have any. I don't have any additional questions either. All right. Is there a motion to approve the proposal as presented? I move that. And I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion carried. Next, approval of write offs due to bankruptcy. And that was a separate mailing that uh, Joe sent out earlier today. Mm -hmm. um, yes. I just have a couple of questions, Joe. Can you, the, the one for the hydrant damage medical emergency that we're just uh, basically writing it off, is that something that? Um, There's actually a state law 
that was revealed to us that if, if a person has a medical emergency and causes property damage like that, that they're not responsible. Okay. They're not financially responsible. Pretty cut and dry. Yeah, I must admit I didn't know about that. I we, we did try to pursue it with that gentleman and we ended up with that legal roadblock. Okay. And the the Hexion ones that it's writing off post bank was that the old Borden chemical or is that Yes. Okay. And they're nowhere to be found. Nope. <laughs> okay. I will make a motion to approve writing off as presented. I second it. All in favor say well, any quest any other questions? I'm sorry. No. No. I no. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion carried. Uh, request approval for our first quarter report to go to council. Um, everyone should have a copy of that in front of you. And that, any questions on that? No, nope, not for me. Of financials and uh, uh, are, are their operating uh, statistics. So, there are no yeah, questions. No. We'll entertain a motion to approve that and present that to council. So moved. I second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion carried. Um, PSC code changes. Anything, Joe? Uh, no. Okay. And vouchers, we have the uh, the summary sheet, and you're going to be getting us uh, the detail. I will. Can we do a, a, a vote on approving the vouchers without looking at them, or do we hold those off until um, our next meeting? I would recommend holding those off myself. Okay. All right. All right. Um, next, under personnel, uh, review plans regarding COVID-19 risk reduction. Joe? Well, just an update on that. We did open the, the pay window today to the public. Oh. Um, <laughs> Was everybody happy and lined up? <laughs> well, we have water drops at six foot intervals so they can maintain their distance and, and as they're coming into, into our pay area. And they, ha and they have to put on a bubble wrap. Thanks, too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's a good... Uh, sign of some normalcy. Uh, we did take some steps to further protect our staff. You know, it's already a pretty safe area. It's windowed off. There's a small slot to pass items. We've even crafted a cover for, for that so we don't have a from that foyer. Um, Along with a lot of other entities, we, we don't have to have a signature for credit card payments any longer. So we've done a number of things like that just to, just to further reduce what risk we can. Um, we have plenty of hand sanitizer uh, both in the foyer and in the office. And we've got a process that every time one of our support specialists goes to the pay window that they uh, disinfect after if they're handling anything. Um, that does two now we have specialists in the office rather than just one, which is how we've been operating. We need one much more on on phones uh so we now have two people in the office, and they're kind of kitty cornered so they have more separations <clears throat> than they might have. Um, but otherwise, that seems to be going well, and we still have a number of staff members working remotely as they're able to, coming into the office at, at intervals, um, but mostly other than in-home meter work or in-home water sampling, I, I'd say we're, 
and, and we never really did lose hardly any of our capability in, in our in our production to the public. So, you know, the update is that so far things are going well. Um, we are wearing masks. And I believe uh, the city is going to follow us in that and the feral um, We have taken a few other steps in the office to make some changes. We put higher uh, level of filtration filters in our HVAC system and some things like that as well. But I'd say uh, right now we're continue to evaluate week by week and everything is, is okay for now. Good. I would like to, to compliment everyone at the utility for, um, I guess, doing what they have been doing well um, since this thing began. Um, I think uh, the people at the utility have done wonders with, uh, you know, what they've had to do um, for the people we serve, the companies we serve, the communities we serve. And I think it's very important that they understand how much we appreciate them, all of them. Thank you. That's critical infrastructure. And they're yeah, certainly life essential work. All right, next meeting would be on a Monday, huh? Monday, third Monday of June? Is the 15th. How does that look for everybody's schedule? <laughs> it looks good for me. <laughs> that should be fine. Okay with me. All right. I just have one quick, I have one quick question. Um, yep. the solar is the, are the solar panels online or are they still waiting for the software? Uh, we're waiting for our friends at Alliant to approve the system, and then we should be able to turn it on. Okay. Okay. So we're very, very close. I run by there every day, and I see the panels. They look very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I also have one other item, and it's not on your agenda in any way, shape, or form, but uh, I think, um, Tom, you never met Ray Hain. Uh, Mark, you did. Um, yes. With Ray passing away, I think that uh, we would be a, remiss as a as a board, as a utility, um, without complimenting Ray, um, and and I guess um, just pointing out that uh, he served the city of Sheboygan in many different capacities over the years, and having him as a member of the Board of Water Commissioners was a real pleasure, and and definitely an asset to the water utility. Agreed. With that, I guess we'll accept a motion to adjourn. So move. I second it. And the chair says aye. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Uh -huh.